What is the function of the ruler in an Islamic society? Do Muslims believe in a theocracy? To get some helpful comments on this, I want to share with you some thoughts from Islam and the Destiny of Man by the Englishman Guy Eaton. He was a, a diplomat, a writer, a public speaker here in London. And in chapter nine of his book, entitled The Rule of Law, he writes the following. The belief that God is the sole legislator flows directly from the Muslim confession of faith, la halaha illallah, which in this context can be interpreted as meaning that there is no legislator but the legislator. The message embodied in the Quran and the laws derived from it and from the Sunnah of the Prophet bind the community together. No exterior pressure is required to make this binding effective. True sovereignty resides neither in the ruler, nor in government, nor in a statistical majority. It belongs to God, but is in a certain sense delegated to his rightly guided community. And the law, precisely because it is a reminder of the laws inherent in our created nature, should not in principle require the apparatus of the state, officials and policemen to make it effective. Whatever the place contemporary Westerners may give to religion in their personal and social life, this is still only a place. It is seen as one element in the total structure of human life, but it is not itself that totality. For Islam, on the other hand, the social order is a part of the religion and cannot be separated from it. The function of the ruler or government as such within this system is strictly limited. Islamic society is theocentric rather than theocratic. This is a really important point, I think, that Guy Eaton makes. So the Islamic state or the society is theocentric rather than theocratic. That's the way the Western world usually sees the Islamic understanding. Guy Eaton continues, were it the latter theocratic, there would be a need for a semi-divine ruler, the representative of God on earth and the interpreter of his will. But in the context of a theocentric society, the ruler occupies a peripheral rather than a central role. Just repeat that. The ruler occupies a marginal, a peripheral role rather than a central one in an Islamic society. Despite certain idealistic theories arising from this nostalgia for the time of the Rashidun, that's the first four caliphs, the Muslims have, on the whole, taken a very pragmatic view of the ruler's function. He is not expected to be a saint or a sage or even a good man in the usual sense of the term, and his private vices may be overlooked so long as they are kept private. What is required of him is that he should have a strong right arm with which to defend the community against its enemies and to maintain the law. I'll end the quote there on page 178. This, this whole chapter is a fascinating uh, discussion of Sunni Islam, his understanding of rulership in an Islamic state. So... Do recommend this. As I say I don't agree with everything he says, but there's much in it, particularly for a Western audience who's not familiar with Islam, traditional Islam, to, to learn from and appreciate and actually relate to. It's very relatable if you're uh, a Westerner. Till next time.